We are going off the rails. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the show dedicated to Disney and Dangents. I am your host once again, Frank, and this week I am joined alongside by my co-host. We've got Denny. Hi there. That's Rhino, actually. I apologize. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> and we have <laughs> Rhino. Hi. Actually, that's Denny. <laughs> Oh, we're off to a good start. We are off to a good start. And again, not joining us this week, Jackie Gailey. But hold on. Jackie, are you here? Oh, don't you know? <laughs> she's still... Uh, she's I didn't realize she was... She's from the, Sheboygan. The, 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 the Minnesota Jackie here. Is she, <laughs> guys. I didn't realize that she's like, the the spirit of Jackie was possessing you. Like, that's next level. Yeah. Oh, Craig, stop. <laughs> <laughs> you, you guys <laughs> you guys are crazy guys. next okay. i'll do texas jackie mm. you guys i don't i can't do it <laughs> 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 what well, we're waiting here's you, delaware you, jackie <laughs> you guys <laughs> you guys i'm from delaware yeah <laughs> it's me jackie from delaware <laughs> I'm from Delaware. <laughs> okay. Awesome. I have no idea where this is going, so we'll just have to wait and see. Uh, of course, I need to remind you that this week's episode of Off the Rails is brought to you by Dreams Unlimited Travel. If you like our content, you want to support us, please book your next vacation through Dreams Unlimited Travel. It costs you no extra money, and you get the help of an amazing Dreams Unlimited Travel agent. So head over to dreamsunlimitedtravel.com today for a free, no obligation quote. Okay, this week we are continuing our uh, conversation about appreciating the different lands around Walt Disney World and right now just in Magic Kingdom. Uh, last time around that we did this, we were talking about Adventureland, and boy, was that episode an adventure, I will say it was. Just I my opinion. Not, why were you Stanley Hudson right then? I, I, I do not care for that. <laughs> I don't know how Jim <laughs> Just does being it. me. Did I stutter? No, Jim does the cool whip. Or so whatever. When yeah. Jim's doing the impression of him, that's something. No. Did I stutter? No, you are. You are correct in that. Yeah, Have you Jim's lost up. your mind? Because I hope you find it. It's my favorite. <laughs> <quote>. <laughs> it, it's one of my favorite yeah. ones, too. Uh, yeah, we did Adventureland, and it was an adventure. But now we've got to move to the wild, wild west. Cue it up, oh, Rhino. Oh, oh, no, no. That's oh. what I wanted you to be. West. Was doing the Jim ride. West. Desperado. Exactly. Wild, wild west. Oh, wiki wiki wah wah wah. That's there it. we go. Thank you, Rhino. I'm gonna give you one more. Shot I, I on was this. doing the roll. The yeah. roll the. <laughs> oh, I don't know what they yell, and there's the echo. Like, I mean, are you talking about the intro for Off the Rails? Do you forget what the intro? No, is? I know the intro, but I there's something. I think it might be Fivels Goes West or something like that, where they make the whip noise, and there's like the there's the like the Lost Boys sound from <laughs> the. <laughs> Like, oh yeah, I think that's echoes. also you know part of the Canyon Arrow, yeah. the with the Simpsons, the Canyon Arrow. Canyon that's what it, Arrow. That, that might be what it is, right? Which, so <laughs> <laughs> which was a part of the inspiration behind the whip noise in our intro that we do have there. So uh, we are moving it from Adventureland to the Wild Wild West. Wild Wild West. Wild Wild, wild West. Okay, I felt like you had more everyone grab things. your Kenneth Branagh. Hold on to your Kenneth Branagh. No, I'm, 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 come back to me. Come back <laughs> to me. Okay, I'll get it. <laughs> We're moving to Frontierland. Yay. Yay! The next land that we are covering as we move our way through Magic Kingdom, and this one has lots of attractions. It has a couple dining options, and I think there's going to be a lot of fun in store. And remember, this is about appreciating, appreciating. Mm. So we might say some things we don't like here and there, but it's mostly about finding the good in these different lands and areas minus Epcot. Sorry, Denny. <laughs> okay. So if you caught this one before the Adventureland one, you're going to be a little bit confused as I drop into this Casey Kasem countdown uh, style voice thing. So I really recommend going back to the first one. I don't think we explained any more of it there, but it was established the Casey Kasem was starting in that one. So that's where we're going from here. So coming in at number 23, we have the one, the only, Splash Mountain. Enjoy a thrilling log flume ride through a whimsical world of classic characters. It's actual. It's factual. You get wet. Yes. <laughs> Put your phone away because that'll get wet too. <laughs> you will get wet on this ride. And not necessarily. Not if you hold up a child in front of you. <laughs> Are oh. they still doing the Ziploc bags? Say it again. Are they still doing the Ziploc bags? Not that I'm aware of. No, I no, haven't honey. seen them I, since. I could have like, used one. When yeah. I when do you remember when we went? Yes. Uh, yeah, it was that when Magic Kingdom the yes. first day it reopened? Denny yes. and I went on it, and her phone got drenched, and then the it's camera 
inside her her fuzzy. phone was yeah oh no delightfully fuzzy hazy it was a hazy shade of water. it's the truth that's mm-hmm. what yep yep it is yeah so i could have used a ziploc bag no ziploc bags yeah i you know i'm very excited for what's coming next with splash mountain but at the end of the day, we know one thing that it's going to retain is that classic drop right Ooh. at the end. It's going to contain all the same. It has to like, they can't move the ride track. Mm-mm. And I just, I love it so much because it does blend the, uh, it blends those calming moments with then those moments of action. Of impending doom. Well. Yeah, it does. <laughs> like the, the, I, it's not technically a double drop because more it's like a down and up when you're going into the laughing place. And like, I, there is something about it. Like, it still makes my, my stomach kind of drop every single time I go. I don't have that for the big drop, the, the main drop, but I get it when you're going down in the laughing place. It's like, oh, is that because you go down and then all of a sudden it's like, nope, we're going right back up. And yeah. it's, it's causing my stomach to do all sorts of weird things. And I, but then, then it gives you a moment to calm down before the next one that comes along the way. So it's a well, it's a well designed layout for a log flume. And I like that. Because some just move very fast, and then it's like, well, I'm going to move fast around, and then big drop. That's it. Yeah, it is a nice, lengthy attraction. If you're looking for something that is a lot of bang for your buck, that's it. Splash Mountain's it. Um, I always, that that up and down, uh, that first little hill always fakes me out. Like, I go, oh, this, no, this is not it. No. But I literally spend the entire attraction going, when's it coming? When's it coming? Like, I enjoy it, but then I'm kind of on edge the entire time waiting for the big drop and it is it is so much fun the animatronics are great it will see a reimagining eventually but i don't know how do you feel about it right now it's like what you said it, it's the it's i i didn't do it for years i didn't do it until i moved here actually because i was just always my mom had tricked me multiple times in my life onto flume rides and so i always was very like no i'm not doing it i don't like the drop mm-hmm. And um, what was surprising when I finally did it, I was like, I thought it was literally just gonna be like up and down, like a Canopy Lake Park flume ride. And I was just shocked where I was like, I can't believe there's so much stuff in here. This ride is so long and there's so many of these tricky drops and stuff like that. So it'd be cool. I'll be, I'll be excited to see what they do with it when it gets the the uh, Tiana mm-hmm. uh, makeover to it. But yeah, I I think it's like what you said. It's a good, it's a good... I feel like you've got a good quality length of an attraction to yeah. go through. You know, it's not one of those where you wait and it's, you know, I know one of the big complaints at like, of uh, like Rock and Roller Coaster, another one at Denny's will just trash yeah. out here. No, was that you do it and it's so quick. It's it like is. over before you know it, you know? And so that's why I feel like this is like kind of the opposite. It's like so much longer than you expect it to be. Yeah. It's a, it would win the award for best bang for your buck. Yeah. That's In it. terms of the time that you <laughs> wait with what you get out of it. There's, yeah. there's some that, some that have it. And it could give you a good bang for your buck. But we are going to move on to number 24. And number 24 is big. The one. Sorry. I'm <laughs> Coming in now at number 24, we have the one, the only Big Thunder Mountain Railroad ride through a gold mining town on a runaway train. The wildest ride in the wilderness. Yes. Yep. It's so good. It's just so, so good. This is one I love to do at night. Oh, yeah. With just, fireworks? Yeah. It's just mm-hmm. like, I don't know. It's just cool. I love to do it at Disneyland. I love to do the one here at Disneyland. I, I, I'm just going to call this Disneyland, too. I'm in that mode right now. I just, I love, I love both versions. I love, I, I, I don't know. You know, I'm partial to the train aesthetic because it's mm-hmm. in my DNA. But the, the I don't know. What I also love about this, well, maybe I should save it for the, when that attraction comes up. But. I just like I just like aesthetically the layout. I like watching the tr- the cars go by and everything like that. I don't know. This one's a lot of fun. I like that it doesn't. It's it's a roller coaster because my thing was like a lot of times it was height I'm afraid of, you know. And so like this one doesn't necessarily go high, but it's like f- quick and fast and turns and like yes. you're always slipping and sliding. And if you ride with Greg, you literally can never get the lap bar anywhere near close to you. So you're just <laughs> praying you don't slip out. You're not going to slip out. Don't be a baby rhino. Don't be a baby, baby. Oh, Come on, dear. baby. Pull that lap tower down, baby. What? <laughs> Pull that lap bar down, baby. <laughs> I, I have no idea. I have no idea. I, the only thing I'd say is don't ride with me because uh, I think I am now. Uh, I, I'm, I'm cursed. I cannot get anything like 
anything except the first six rows. And okay. I, Why don't it, you just ask? Because I don't like confrontation. I know, you know <laughs> yeah, that. I, like, I, I always like just say, can I sit in the back? He just says thank you and goes to his number. Yeah. I, mm-hmm. I like... Just letting fate decide. It's mm-hmm. the hard part about Walt Disney World because in Universal that I fully appreciate the fact that you do have groupers who are putting you into the positions where you need to be so that way they can maximize uh, how many people are getting on the ride. Uh, but then there's also like every now and then when I do go to a different theme park outside of you know outside of disney and universal sea world or you know back in the day when i would go to king's island and kennywood it it always was like yeah but i like too where there's no grouper and you just get to go and pick your spot because then you don't have to be that pest asking like yeah can i sit in the back because everyone wants to sit in the back back? and and, you know and then there's roller coasters that you want to sit in the front too and i i I never minded grouping people in the places that they wanted to go when uh, when I worked in attractions, but I, I don't like asking at the same time, too. If I'm with someone, I'll make them ask, but I don't I, I hate asking for it personally. And the best was when I worked at Test Track because you'd get a family of four and be like, OK, I need two in the front row, two in the back and then single, single. And then you would inevitably get the family say, uh, we would like actually we will all want to be in the front mm-hmm. row. And I'm like, but mm. there's only impossible. There's only three seats, so three of you can be in the front row, and one person can be in the back, and we can do that. No, we would like to all. It's like I am not giving yeah. you two cars just yeah. to do that. That is not happening. So mm-hmm. figure it out. But yeah, don't don't ride Big Thunder Mountain with me, or you're gonna end up in the front rows, and you're gonna be like, we were halfway down a hill, and now finally it's moving. We <laughs> so <Yeah>. slow. <laughs> That's true. And I like everything that they, when they reimagined the queue and they added like the, you know, the, uh, all of that stuff to the queue. Barnabas T. Bouillon mm-hmm. and all the interactive elements. Yep. And a little canary and all that jazz. You know what they say about the canary in the coal mine, Rhino? He dies. That's Fantastic. Very sad. What is the saying? Well, I believe it is there. So that yeah. way, if, yeah, it, uh, is, if so, it dies, well, then yeah. you, know you know that to there's get a, out. yeah. yeah. Exactly. Seems awful. Sorry, birds. Poor little guy. You know what? This one's for the birds. Let's hear it for the birds. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't know why that came to mind. <laughs> Next. Next. Oh, <laughs> coming in at number 25, we have Tom Sawyer Island. Brave this Mark Twain inspired hideaway. Yeah. I like it. I wish they had the restaurant thing out there because it would be such a cool place to like sit and eat. But you know what? One of the best places is is the rocking chairs that are facing Mm -hmm. Thunder Mountain, and that's what I was going to say about Thunder Mountain. I was like, I love that there's that area where it's like you are literally like in. I feel like actual like environment. Like it's all very. I hate saying immersive, but it all feels like you're Mm -hmm. cohesive. It feels like I don't know. It's a cool place where I'm like. If you're local and you want to like just bring a book and read a book or something, yeah. somebody's going on the ride. You don't. You they're doing a couple of the thrill rides or waiting for Splash. You don't want to do that. You don't want to get wet. Go over to Tom Sawyer Island. You know the only problem yeah. is sometimes I feel like I'm trapped. Like, well, I mean you are. It's an yeah. island. Yeah. I just don't like taking the raft. That's all. But, I mean it's cool that they Would are rafts, swim? but it's just like uh, I just wish there was like a bridge or something. Like yeah. I know it's then it's no longer an island, so that defeats the purpose, but well, no, it's still an island if there's a bridge. It's more than they would have to do a drawbridge so that way the riverboat could get yes. through it. But... Oh, that's yeah, that's true. That is true. That is true. Anyway, I like the chairs. I mean, can we Me find too. out if we are able to skydive into Tom Sawyer? No, it's island? a no fly zone over Magic Kingdom. <sighs> well, I mean yeah, you can get so. special FAA permission. Maybe you can parasail in. <laughs> Like you jump off of Contemporary, the fifteenth floor, or you you're just, ca- where the uh, California Grill is, yeah, and, and you just, <laughs> where Tinkerbell <laughs> comes out of the castle. Yeah. Oh, there's you a come, separate. You go out and you hang a right. Line. Yeah. Yes. Y'all, I think we figured it out. Why isn't there a zip line zip course <laughs> through <laughs> Tom Sawyer <laughs> Island? I mean, that would you know, be pretty incredible. Shanghai Disneyland has their adventure course where you wear the harness and you go across like obstacles and stuff. Why doesn't? Why in Tom Sawyer Island make it a zip line course? Just zip line all around there. Just perfect. 
Yeah, charge charge so much extra for it. Charge two hundred dollars per person to zip line around. But starting with zip lining from Cinderella Castle yes. all the way down into it, uh, I I have to agree though with Rhino. Uh, it's it's relaxing when you get those mm-hmm. spots with the rocking chair. Uh, for some reason, the rocking chairs that they have on the actual Big Thunder Mountain side, they're usually busy and quite regularly when i do sit and relax in those ones that also seems i it used to be a smoking area so there are some people who have been coming for so long they still go there and just smoke and it's like Ugh. there's not cast members down there so no one really knows and Mm-mm. no one's going to rat on them so every now and then i've have had that area ruined but tom sawyer island mm-hmm. it's it's different and it also it feels disconnected from everything else so yeah. it's a little bit more relaxing it's a respite and, yeah, yes. I and I've said it before. I still wish I could fit in those caves, but you know what? I'm too tall. I'm too fat, and you can't fit in the caves. Too tight. Uh, it's it's tight. There was one oh. time that I went through with Kylie, and I was legitimately like, I don't know if I'm supposed <laughs> to be in this area. I may not but make it. I out. feel like I I like felt like I was stuck in here. And I'm like, they're gonna, they're literally gonna have to come through with a hammer and break apart this oh cave to get me through because I think I actually went through a shortcut that was meant for kids. Oh no! Yeah. It was bad. Oh. It was bad. It was probably my fault again, but it was bad. Good gravy! <laughs> but I like the Fort Langhorn. Yeah. Yeah. I like that we've got animatronics out there. Again, there's a bathroom out there if you happen to need one. And when I agree, a Rhino, bathroom. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I agree with you and and the fact that Aunt Polly's I don't do that publicly, should be sorry. open. The, yeah, um, Aunt but, Polly's should yeah. absolutely be open. Because I think that would be lovely. like such a fun experience to be able to just be out mm-hmm. there and like snacking and stuff like yeah. that. Like yes. I don't know. What it's like make up a little picnic, I guess, and bring it yourself or bring mm-hmm. food over from somewhere else. But yeah, one of my favorite souvenirs that we have from way back when and maybe i'm just making it up so my mom will yell at me if i'm wrong with it but uh she might have got rid of it once we moved but we had this like kind of semi-translucent plastic cup a little bit clear and it had cinderella castle on it and it was like a plastic cup and my memory from it is that we got it at aunt polly's back Mm. in the early 90s and so it was always like it was the cup that you were happy to grab and drink of because it was from that vacation and i'm like 99 percent sure it came from there and it was always like you know once i'm grown up and moved to florida when i'd come back home and see that cup it was like oh yeah that that one that one so i i have a lot of fun at least i have Fond nostalgia for Aunt Polly's, even though I have very blurred memories of it. But I don't. That's old age for you. Living, living a hard life. Living that nine to five. I I have a way um, to make a living. <laughs> what a way to make a living. So I have um, some <laughs> nostalgia with Aunt Polly's because the last time I ate there and I sat out there because it was actually open. So I went to the Magic Kingdom to be able to go out to Tom Sawyer Island to eat at Aunt Polly's, which is just never open, was um, that was the weekend uh, before I applied for the disc. Oh. oh. So that's kind of my little warm and fuzzy moment with Aunt Polly's. Did yeah. you see Steve there? I was just going to say Steve was out oh. there. Mm-hmm. I'm like. I did yeah. not see Steve there. Yeah, we, we sent him out there and we told him not to come back. And that's why. That's not why he's been gone. Oh. Yeah. yeah. No, he, uh, he's he, still <laughs> out there. I think it was actually the year before okay. you started. We sent him to Aunt Polly's and he just never came back. He posted his story and his dining review, but uh, oh. he couldn't couldn't get off the island. He felt trapped, just like Rhino. Is so he living is in possible. Port Langhorn, maybe? Yeah, no, that's why. Don't you remember the last time we've seen Steve, he was in what appeared to be the wilderness. That's during true. a marathon show. You know what? Um, if, if they ever rethemed this island, I think they should. Uh, I guess it wouldn't make sense. I was like, huh. it should be Neverland. Oh. I was just thinking about how, like, you know, like it would be cool. Because for me, when I'm over there, it reminds me like kind of like Hook. But I know that's not a Disney movie. Yeah. But I'm like, oh, that would be fun. Yeah. Like, that would be fun. I, I feel like there's still. I, I don't know. Never mind. Next one. No, I do agree with you, though. That would, it, it would be fitting. It would be very fitting. But okay, Rhino's insisting that we move on to our neck one. So neck one, neck, neck one, neck right one. here. Our neck right one. Here. Pain so, in the. Well, this is our final attraction for this list. Coming in at number twenty six, we have Country Bear Jamboree. Have a knee slapping time with these singing bears. Now, I have never slapped my knee during this show, so I'm not sure where they're getting that from. But mm. I will admit there are singing bears inside. There are, and they're so cute. 
And I, isn't is this a rite of passage? Like, should everyone who comes to Magic Kingdom at least see Country Bear Jamboree one time in their I lifetime? I think it's funny still. Like, I legitimately think, like, there's, like, a humor in it. Like, mm-hmm. it's a... You know, I know it's like Americana and it's supposed to be this whole thing. I, th- I don't know. I just... It's even moving past nostalgia. When I go in there, I'm like, this is funny. Like, yeah. it's one of the few things left that actually makes fun of itself, I feel. Like, maybe not even of itself, but it's like makes... It's aware. It doesn't take itself too seriously. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And that's where I'm like... And there's not a lot of things like that mm-hmm. anymore around here. And so, I don't know. There's a lot of borderline jokes in there, too, that are very, like... yes. The adults Grown in the up house. in nature, yeah. And I'm always like, oh, I'm surprised they haven't edited around these things yet. And I'm like, but yeah. I don't know. That's where I'm just like, but that's where I like, where I'm like, that's funny. You know, mm-hmm. like, I don't know. It's not not offensive. It's, Cheeky. well, maybe offensive to somebody. But I'm like, yeah. but I was like, maybe to the people that it's based on. But like. <laughs> There's a bunch of Floridians out there who are like, I think they're making fun of me, Ma. I'm, I'm We're from, from Tampa. Tampa. <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> my name's Bubbles. <laughs> oh. And this is my drinking jug. <laughs> like, it's three X's on yeah. it. <laughs> I yeah i I did it over uh, over the holiday season, and it was very busy inside because obviously crowds, you know, can sometimes get busier over the holidays. And I I do I like when you're in there in a packed room because. So many people in there are able to like that. The laughter is infectious. Yeah. People start picking up on on the humor in it. That sometimes when you're in there with like twenty other people, you have the you have the one chuckler in the back. The, the Ryan who do that do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, you get that one person, and it's like, oh, I want to laugh, but at the same time too, <laughs> I don't. I don't want to be the one person in the theater. <laughs> 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 it was kind of like our experience of seeing Ghostbusters Afterlife in in the theater. It was what? just one person laughing unnecessarily at everything, right regardless of whether oh. or not it was a joke. Yeah, it wouldn't and be then, a joke. They'd be like, can you open the door? <laughs> and you're like, what? And then when oh, they dear. did make a joke, quiet. Oh, yeah, he no. was like, he didn't completely oh, understand dear. the humor, but he loved the movie. I mean, I loved the movie, wow. but yeah, it was a weird experience. It was so <laughs> weird. Awesome. Just wanted to laugh. He Maybe just he was watching YouTube videos or something. Yeah, like, he would. Yeah, I need to go to the pre-screening event in IMAX so I can watch something else on my phone. <laughs> exactly. They're they're out there. We all know that's the truth. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yes, Denny. I think it's a rite of passage. Okay. I think everyone who comes to visit Magic Kingdom should do it at least once, regardless of whether or not they care about it. It really gives you a, a good eye into wh- like something original with Walt Disney World, mm-hmm. since this was yeah. a Walt Disney World original. It wasn't wasn't out at Disneyland first, wasn't in Tokyo Disneyland first. It was it was here. So mm-hmm. it's something that truly needs to be experienced. Awesome. In my I opinion. I agree. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Thank you. I concur. Okay. Well, we're going to move on to the dining portion of this. Mm-hmm. And coming in at number 27, uh, a restaurant that has been open quite consistently now because it features a 50th anniversary menu item and a little bit more, but it would be shuttered for many, many times out of the year, except on weekends and busy times. We have Golden Oak Outpost. And so this is the the... Quick service restaurant window. Okay, restaurant window. What was that? I was trying to. I, well, at <laughs> first I was saying quick service restaurant. It's not. It's a kiosk. It's a it window. Is. It's. It is a box that used to it's serve McDonald's is food. It a caboose? What? It's a caboose. Is that what it really is? No, it's, it's a cabin. No. Oh, that. No. Is it's it? a, he's it's called Golden Oak Outpost, gang. Oh, I hate to break it to you. Forgive it's me. an outpost. Sorry. In the frontier, <laughs> which was the little places where they would set up. To shoot True. people, like oh, right. I don't Isn't think that that's my gosh. No, I think it's like a, a store, like an things. outfitters, an outpost. Oh. Yeah, maybe so, like dry so, goods and stuff like yeah, that. like Got it. like kidney beans, kidney and, uh, beans, pinto kidney beans. beans. All the beans. You Dry know, cowboys beans. love their beans. Well, they got a fish sandwich there right now. Thank there you. you. <laughs> um, I miss McDonald's fries here. Can I say yeah. that? I do. I, do too. I, I honestly, yeah. I do okay. too. Because sometimes you're just like, I like a good. We w- one of the best things we found in Italy. I know this is a terrible American thing to say, but it was the fry place yeah. where you went in and they literally just make fries. They like scoop oh. them up, they put them in a little cone, and then you had like twenty sauces to pick oh, that you could wow. put on them. And they just walked with the French. And I'm like, that was great, a walking French fry. That's what I want. Just a little yeah. container, a little snack. Yeah, 
I, I, you know, I know you said American in that way, but I think that's actually like a Belgian style It is, it thing. is. You are yeah. right, because I know I'm they were freaked. doing it at the, the other thing. Yeah, Kim's Belgian Restaurants talked about is making an actual thing like that finally. But the um, also, when they brought, when this started reopening, it was like a couple of years ago. I definitely think I like I went I, to the I was going to get, yeah, the waffle we went there fries, together. I loved, they had the BLT, mm. like waffle fries, and those were so good, but they were there for like a second. Yeah. I went there. I think that was before you that I went there and I had all of them. But I remember when we had, I think it was like jalapeno poppers there one time you and I went. We did. Yeah. Yeah. That was not too long ago, actually. Yeah. I mean, everything's long in my life. Well, and they'll also do little mini donuts sometimes for the Halloween party or whatever Halloween event, usually whatever it ends up being. But they'll do like a little, a little brown bag of, Little donuts. I am all into little donuts. Oh. So, what are these donuts for ants? Yeah, they need to be at least three times bigger. No, I like the little donuts. Okay, so, but on. all in all, all in all, I miss the fries. Yeah, I think we all do. Are we whispering now? Yeah, we're, not, we're not playing the whispering. I don't know, but I really want some French fries right now. <laughs> <laughs> French fries. Some French fries. Les a les bon temps roulés. Okay, moving in at number 28, we have Pecos Bill, Tall Tale Inn and Cafe, serving up, oh, just so many delicious things uh, that are Tex-Mex, not inspired, but kind of, <laughs> but They're not. They're Tex-Mex adjacent. Yeah, that's a great, great word to say, adjacent. It's like, that's what they're going to tell you it's Tex-Mex, mm. but it's like, no, nah, it's it's adjacent to it. And, you know, it can't decide what it wants to be. Does Mm-mm. it want to be Tex-Mex? Does it want to be a Chipotle? What does it, what does it truly want to be? And, yeah. oh, man, like, just, I miss Fixin's Bar so much. Me I too. miss Fixin's Bar. I know. I know. We'll get it back one day, maybe. I know. All right. Then. Maybe. I hope. But... but I, you know, it's one of those ones where it's, I, I used to always go out of my way to have it. I don't as often anymore, but it's still, it's the old reliable. You know, you're going to have a good meal anytime you go to Pecos Bill and there's plenty of seating or you can go over to to Trigo Tavern and you can sit over there as I recommended hmm. in the last episode based on Adventureland, but yeah, it's the old reliable. It's nice and dark in there in the seating section. At least they have one that is kind of nice and dark. And I like how it's themed, kind of like a courtyard. So if you're looking for a cooler, darker space, because you just need to get out of the Florida sun and the heat and the crowds, that is a nice location. But there's nothing right now that kind of stands out on the menu to me as something I've got to roll in there to get. Yeah, I think it's just because I've eaten it all so much Mm -hmm. over the years. And this is one one place that hasn't really changed, you know, the burger will come on the menu, they'll pull it off. And, you know, when they had the giant, like secret nacho menu. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The secret, secret menu item or something. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, I, so they only make small changes to this quick service. They don't always make big ones. So I feel like it's just, it's at the point now where I'm, I'm a little bit bored with it and kind of like the same way with Casey's. I still eat there when I'm looking for something like the one day Denny and I were there a year ago and I was like, Ooh, that, that would be okay. And you and I got kids meals there mm-hmm. and it was nice. It was. So did but, you get the big owl burger? No, not yet. Not yet. Whiskey barbecue sauce. Mm. This is my go-to Ooh. quick service place in, um, in magic kingdom. Yeah. W- what do you get? Um, well, I used to do the, I would like to do the, I would do the fajita platter and then you go, you'd go to the fixing bar and you'd be like, it ended up being like, this is definitely a meal for two. And that's where I was like, that's what I always felt like I overdid it. And so that's yeah. why I'm like, you know, but I mean, yeah. I like yeah. the tacos when the tacos are on the menu, the tacos are nice. They're, they are, but yep. they have a thing right now, a 1971 meal, beef nachos, yellow rice, fountain beverage, and a 50th themed cake pot. Beef nachos, Wait. yellow rice. Okay. For, yeah, I had to make sure I read that right. Okay. Beef. Beef. How much is it? 1971. Mm. Oh, so wow. So it's aptly named and priced. Cute. Yeah. Cute. But uh, yeah, interesting. I'm just looking. I just pulled up the menu really quick because oh, I was just you. curious. But uh, I'm also going to have you pull up the menu for our next one uh, just so we have the context of it going into it. Coming in at number 29, wrapping us up for Frontierland, we have Westward Ho, named after a What'd Disney movie, Westward Ho. I know Westward Ho the Wagons. 
might be the official full name of it. Mm-hmm. Westward Ho, though. I, don't I even think know where they're this going is. westward. What? It's, this is right across from Pecos Bill, Tall Tale Inn and Cafe. Yeah. Oh, it's kind of down popcorn the ways. Popcorn. Um, there's a pretzels there. Sometimes, like a couple years ago, they did a really cool snack mix with house made marshmallows. Yeah. Well, in it, it. And in a little brown bag with a little Mickey sticker with he's wearing his uh-huh. little coonskin hat. Oh. And oh, it was really cute. Yeah. This is where, uh, you know, when Casey's wasn't reopened, where they were serving the corn dog nuggets for a time. They still and- are. According to the website right now, they're still doing the corn dog nuggets. They have the candied bacon skewer with chips. There's right. a yeah, bear claw. That, right? That's the jalapeno poppers. And the potato chips. I didn't see yeah. the jalapeno poppers on there before. Well, it says I it's if... on the website, so I don't know. I don't know how reliable the website is versus yeah. what's actually there. But yeah, yeah I says, know the candy bacon's still there. It says breaded jalapeno peppers stuffed with nacho cheese, served with ranch dressing. Five seventy nine. Mm, wow, I love a good jalapeno popper. Well, that's I the question. Know. Are they good? I I don't think there's a bad jalapeno popper that I've ever like I truly like had. You don't you haven't don't met like. a jalapeno popper I don't like. <laughs> what, now, what don't you like about them? Is it the cream cheese? It's the jalapenos. Oh, you not you don't I like mean, to I, get a jalapeno business. I, <laughs> <laughs> the jalapeno brand. I'm okay <laughs> with a jalapeno. Do I want to be downing them? You know, on moss. No. So you're not a jalapeno fan. <laughs> no, I'm not a jalapeno. <laughs> Oh, that's, a, yeah. that's a cross <laughs> reference to a, a, a old recurring Way joke that we haven't we haven't made the, <laughs> the, the uh, it was a holla bread yeah it was like oh. a holla oh. uh, it, it's a it's a long story it's a universal <laughs> show you'll have to okay yeah it. it was like when holla, holla bread went through its like first big uh Big wave when it yeah, started it appearing Toosome on the menu opened? for everything, and and like it was in everything on Tucson. All their French toasts use yeah. like challah bread, I think. Yeah. And we were, and bread. I was like, I don't know what challah bread is. And then, okay. and then it got into this whole jalapeno. <laughs> and then somebody somebody sent us a poster of Al Pacino with challah bread, saying hello, <laughs> say hello, my little. That's I still awesome. Still have it in my inbox. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so then when and I now think we have jalapeno, jalapeno poppers, jalapeno. <laughs> so I, we need a dining review oh, of those poppers. My, I am hungry. Yeah, yeah, I am hungry. Maybe we can go do it, and then someone will just be like, "But this isn't a full service it's restaurant," true. and I'll be like, "You know what? I'm not fancy. I'm not fancy. I put my pants on like everyone else does out there, over my head, <laughs> <laughs> over my head. Yes, in." And that's just how it's the easiest way to do it. But uh, that's it for Frontierland. I I do enjoy that we always end these, like we finally get the tangent in at the end. And boy, did we ever with this one. So uh, with that, we are going. I'm so so sorry. I'm so sorry. sorry. (laughs) I wanted to make sure that this, I'm the penny on the track that derails the train. The, I know we said it, but did we not talk about the diamond horseshoe? You know what? It's not, it's not on the map, so yeah. no, we didn't talk about that, and nor did we talk about the uh, Fronta- oh, Frontierland Shooting Gallery. Oh, Diamond Horseshoe is part of Liberty Square. Yes. That's what it says on the website, which oh, is so weird it part because of it's Square. definitely like it's it, definitely like Western-themed, so I don't understand that. Yeah, it's, it's listed in Liberty Square. That's so bizarre. Anyway, okay, well, to be continued. But the Shooting Gallery should Hoosha. also be a part of this, and it's not. And it's not, and yeah. it's so good. Please go to the Shooting Gallery. And just have fun. Yeah. Me I recently did that. Does it cost money still? Nope. It was free. Yeah, it says Frontier Shooting Arcade. Mm-hmm. So good. <laughs> That's what it says. It does say it has a fee on the website, but mm-hmm. I know that it did not. Yeah. It was free. For a while, so I'm pretty sure it is still is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's, I, that used to be my favorite thing growing up when... Uh, when we'd be waiting around for like a parade, like I remember around uh, Main Street Electrical Parade, so sometime around 2000-ish, at, at night they would take away the fee on it and they would just turn them all on. So then when we'd be like waiting for the parade, we'd watch in uh, right outside of the Frontierland Shooting Gallery. So it was like that nice little thing to kind of keep us preoccupied before the parade got there. So a lot of, lot of good times. You know, uh, I'm not a good shot, I'll tell you that much. I can get a couple of those things to move around, but guns were never my forte. Mm -mm. So would have made a terrible military man. I don't even think they would have been able to train me. The splinters would have gotten you on the old west. 
And the shopping isn't listed. Yeah, I mean we have the we have the pin shop. Yeah, Frontierland a Trading solid, Post. We can get a leather bracelet there. Right. Yeah. They'll, they'll do the thing where they put your name in the leather mm-hmm. bracelet. They I, used to. I don't know. I I'd prefer. Metal. I don't need a leather bracelet. I don't like jewelry. Okay. Is that jewelry? That is jewelry, bro. Is it, is it bracelet? Jewelry? It's a bracelet, baby. But if baby. there's no jewels in it, is it jewelry? It's an accessory. Oh, Danny just got it there. It is an accessory. I think. I don't know. She wins. Yeah, that's uh, that's the only gift shop, though. I mean, technically, the Splash Mountain has its exit right. gift shop as Which well, too. Which is fantastically themed. Look up if you go in there. That's a lot of fun. Uh, it's uh, very well themed. Of course, you won't find any Splash Mountain merchandise in there. No. And uh, that's... Yeah, why would you? They never reopened, after they ran out of the merchandise, they never reopened the other gift shop that was beside Splash Mountain. So that's sad. Those two shops. Yeah, those are, that's it for the shops. Mm -hmm. That's it for the shops. Let's hear it for the shops. Let's hear it for the shops. Oh. Oh, you were clapping. You were doing a round of applause. That's that's what you mean. Let's Let's hear it for the shops. Yeah. Let's hear it for the shops. Come on. Come on. I put in crowd music in the background. <laughs> you got something in your throat. No, no, that's the crowd. You know, it's as, <laughs> it, as more people come together, it starts sounding like echoist r- of roar of the crowd. Yes. <sighs> you sound like Edward Scissorhands when they gave him scotch in the basement. <laughs> hey, listen. You the, know the scene. The, I do know the scene. And I think that's the perfect way to describe my speech pattern and how I screw up words. It's kind of, I am the... My voice is like Edward Scissor's hands. His <laughs> act- <Scissors> hands. <laughs> <laughs> the way I speak is the equivalent pins. of his hands. And when he's trying to pick stuff up and such, and that's just, that's yeah. how words come out of my mouth. It's like they're they're trying. They can't really quite do it. They can't do it, but they want to. They want to. They want to be a cheap. real boy, but they can't be. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> We, we're going back on the rails. Thank you so much for this conversation. Thank you, everyone out there, for listening and watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did and you want to support us more, you can always book a trip through Dreams Unlimited Travel. Get a free no-obligation quote today at dreamsunlimitedtravel.com. That's a place to do it. And if you're listening to this, of course, always subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts and leave a five-star rating and review if you're listening through Apple Podcasts. And if you're watching this on YouTube, please make sure to hit the thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and then leave comments, questions, and suggestions in the comment section below. But that's going to do it for this week's episode. Denny and Rhino, thank you again for the awesome conversation. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you so much to everyone out there for listening and watching. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you next time again when we go off the rails. Take care. Bye-bye.